Hi guys, I'm here because I want to share my labour and delivery story and I thought I'd better get this done before I forget because Gabby is almost two months old now so I'm definitely dragging my feet here. Um, I've got her on my lap right now so if I'm like, you know, jumping everywhere it's because of her. Um, but yeah, basically I went into labour when I was 40 weeks and five days pregnant. Gabby was born on New Year's Day and she weighed six pounds, 12 ounces, and she was 19 three quarters of an inch in length. And she was born at 3.34 p.m. <laughs> I'm like, what else do I want to say? Um, but yeah, she was born at that time. And um, yeah, she was he slightly heavier than Nathaniel, um, slightly shorter than Nathaniel, and she definitely came out with a lot less hair than Nathaniel. Um, but yeah, I had a natural or unmedicated labor and delivery, um, and which is what I had hoped for. Um, so yeah, I went into labor on New Year's Day. I actually didn't think I was having contractions at the time. Um, woke up as usual, had breakfast, and then it was sort of like 8 a.m., I was thinking to myself, hmm, something's going on here. Like, I was having what I thought was Braxton Hitch contractions um, because I had been having them, like, a few days before as well. But they were, like, very few and far between, like, hours between each other. Um, but this time they were coming more regularly. Um, they were still irregular in terms of, you know, they were coming, like, five minutes apart, eight minutes apart, ten minutes apart, but they were still coming frequently. So I was thinking, hmm, something's going on here. But they weren't painful. So I wasn't too sure if I was going to labour and I was talking to Chris and I'm like, this is what's going on. Um, so he encouraged me to call the midwife because I was like, oh, I don't want to waste the midwife's time and blah, blah. So I did call her and she told me that she wanted me to go into hospital. Now, my original plan was to give birth at the birthing centre, but throughout my pregnancy, um, it seemed my iron was very, very low. So because of that, I couldn't have a birth center birth um, just in case I hemorrhaged or anything like that. So, cause you know, the, the birth center can't deal with emergencies like that. So I had to have a hospital birth. So we made our way to the hospital. Well, actually we called my mother-in-law first cause she had to come over and look after Nathaniel. Um, we started to make our way to the hospital probably about 11 a.m. And I text my sister, told her that I think something's going on and that I was making my way to the hospital. And I also text one of my friends because she was like, you better tell me when you go to labor. So, um, yeah, we made our way to the hospital. We actually got lost. We went to show, <laughs> we'd forgotten where the triage department was. Um, we went to the wrong floor, but we asked someone and then we got to the right floor. So we got to triage and, you know, they did the usual to check me in. And then um, we just had to like wait for a bed and we didn't actually have to wait long for a bed this time. Um, I called my midwife, midwife and told her that we were there. Um, she arrived probably about um, the afternoon. So it was about noon when she arrived. Yeah. And then she checked my blood pressure and she checked the baby's heart rate and everything was good. So then um, she went to check me to see how far, how dilated I was. And then she said, oh, you've made things interesting. I'm like, why? And she goes, you're four to five centimeters dilated. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't think I would be like, you know, at least halfway. So um, I was like, wow. You know, I was at that point, I still wasn't feeling any pain. I wasn't even sure I was having contractions. I was like, something is happening. And I'm like, I think I'm having a contraction. <laughs> um, so yeah, she goes to me, so you decide what you want to do. Because I said to her, I don't even feel like I need to be here. Um, so she said to me, well, if you want to go home, go home. Because my house is not far from the hospital. Um, or hang around the hospital, go get something to eat if you want. So then in the end, we decided to go get something to eat. Because when I was in labor with Nathaniel, I hadn't eaten anything. And I was puking everywhere. So I wanted to make sure I had something in my stomach. So we decided to head down to the cafeteria, got something to eat, and definitely my um, contractions got stronger all of a sudden. And I, I think it's because the midwife checked me, you know, when you're like, someone fiddles around down there, it's bound to do something, right? So they definitely intensified and they were still very bearable. You know, I was just standing there, I was rocking and stuff whilst I was waiting for our food. 
and then we sat down um i found it harder sitting down for sure um but yeah i just ate and then i was like texting my sister telling her what's going on and stuff and then um once we were done eating we started walking around because i just wanted to stay mobile and move around and stuff like that um so the midwife she was hanging around um at the cafeteria as well because she said she was just going to stay around in the hospital and she was going to read a book and stuff and she happened to see me and she came up to us and she was like oh how's it going and um chris was like oh they're definitely getting stronger and she said yeah i could tell so um you know we were just walking around and then when we thought we were ready to go back upstairs to triage um chris went out to get the bag from the car um and then we made our way up the stairs and it was chris's idea to walk up the stairs i just remember he was like oh let's go up the stairs and i was like okay good idea you know because i wanted to stay as mobile and i wanted to keep things moving as well but when we were walking up the stairs oh my god i just remember the pain just intensifying and i couldn't walk up the stairs and i thought oh my god am i even gonna make it up the stairs And, and i was only going two flights of stairs right but I don't know, I felt like I was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro or something, but <laughs> not that I can compare it to climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, but I was like, oh my God, am I even going to make it up the stairs, right? And the last thing I want to do is give birth on the stairs. Um, but yeah, and I was like, whose bright idea was this? And Chris was like, and I think he was probably giggling in the background. But um, yeah, we made it up to triage and then um, like um, a room wasn't available yet which is fine so she sent us to the waiting room and so I went to the waiting room and there was like an, another couple there and then one guy sitting there as well and I was just like pacing up and down the waiting room um and then I think I went to the bathroom yeah I went to the bathroom and um, I didn't lock the door because I was like I guess to Chris just stay outside the door and I'm not locking the door just in case anything happens um so I went in there you know peed <laughs> and then came back out i would say my contractions got really really strong and they were now closer together i would say pretty much on top of each other um maybe a minute apart two minutes apart and then we went back to triage um to go to my room because i was like okay i think something's gonna happen here now so i just didn't want to be far away and so we went back into the room where they check you i guess triage and then um my my midwife came I, I don't know if i called her or she was there already um but whatever she was there and then um a room became available which was great so things were going well so far and then um we walked to the room and in between i had to stop and like rest on the bar and then um we got to the room and you know settled down um i think i was already in my gown i just kind of had to take my bottoms off because i still had my bottoms on um took that off took my shoes off and um she went to i don't know where she went the midwife disappeared somewhere because she wanted to get you know set up from the iv because i don't know if i mentioned i needed to get an iv because my irons were very low during my pregnancy so um the iv was to um so that i could have oxytocin um once the baby was born um so she had disappeared i guess to get that <laughs> and then i just felt this huge huge pain and i remember saying to chris where is she like because <laughs> i was like something's happening here and then um like chris was just silent he didn't even say where she was or anything and i was like thinking oh my god she better get here i don't know where she disappeared to um and then she came into the room and i was like walking towards the bed and then my water broke and then um and i was like oh my god my water's broke yeah things were just really really strong then and yeah the baby was just definitely coming because that was just, it was almost the same as how it went with nathaniel's um labor and delivery because my water broke and he was just here yeah, within like minutes um so i was like standing with my hand like resting on the bed and i was sort of like you know just squatting over and um the midwife was there and there was another nurse there and um i think eventually what happened is a doctor came in because when my water broke my there was meconium in the water but um the doctor left like soon as after he came in he disappeared um 
so then I wasn't really doing anything and and then the midwife was like you're doing great and I'm thinking to myself I'm not doing anything <laughs> and I'm like should I be pushing now and then um like I didn't say anything but in my head I was like oh I guess I should be doing something right now <laughs> I don't know why I just I didn't push I just felt like I had to kind of like wait for some reason and really I could feel her because you know when you have an unmedicated um, labor you feel everything so I could feel her like coming down but then she'd go back up and I'm like hell no like you are not coming back up so then I started pushing and then um, the midwife saying oh, you're doing great and then um, when I guess when she started to crown um, the midwife she got a nice hot towel and she put it like just um, against my my butt I guess and um, that felt really really good and um, I could feel um, her head coming and like obviously stretching and then um, yeah she started coming out and I could just feel her coming out and then um, her head came out and I remember the midwife just telling me to like to breathe and she said just breathe like you're blown out a candle so I was going <laughs> and then um, yeah and then when I was had to push again pretty much pushed everything out and her shoulder came out and everything and then um, it was very messy like oh my god just everything was just gushing out and the midwife was like everybody was getting splashed <laughs> because I was doing the whole thing pretty much in almost like a I was more standing kind of like a half standing half squatting position which was like an amazing position to deliver your baby by the way um, so yeah and I was squeezing Chris's hand the whole time and I remember at one point he had I think he was just trying to rub my back and I had told him before like don't touch me right <laughs> and he forgets sometimes so he had his hand on my back because he was trying to help I guess you know rub my back and I think he completely forgot that he had his hand on my back and I was like is someone resting on me and then the midwife was like no 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 it's just the baby coming and I'm like looking at Chris and Chris like quickly moved his hand <laughs> um but yeah so she arrived and um um the midwife handed her to me I had to grab her and I was like, oh my God, I can't hold her, I can't hold her. And I was like, Chris, help me hold her. So then Chris went to help me hold her. And then um, we brought her up to the bed because I was still leaning over the bed. And then um, I got to like just stare at her. And her eyes were just wide open. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Chris got to cut the cord. And then I climbed into the bed and then they put her on me straight away. Um, so we got that, you know, skin to skin Um time which was really nice because I didn't have that with Nathaniel so it was a really different experience um it was almost similar but a lot nicer because I had a midwife this time and like oh if I'm ever pregnant again I hope I have a midwife again because it was such an amazing experience it was much better than when I had an OB you know it was just nice to have someone there that's been with you throughout your pregnancy and knows what you want and she just she just did everything I wanted she pretty much stayed out of it to be honest because I had told her like I just want to do it myself you know um I want you to be there um but just let me do it myself kind of thing so yeah and that's pretty much how it went it was just it went really really well I was just glad that I got a room and we got a room fairly quickly um yeah I stayed there probably we left at 8 15 p.m um so i was home the same day nathaniel was already in bed so he didn't get to meet his sister until the day after um but yeah i think that was pretty much it that was my labor and delivery story it went really really well and i totally encourage anybody who's thinking about having an unmedicated labor and delivery to just really consider it if you're you know if you want, really want to do that because it's amazing like it's just amazing to be able to feel everything and yeah it's not bad it's not as bad as people make out I don't know maybe it's just me and just the way I think but I don't know I don't find it that painful but um obviously it is painful but it's a different kind of pain that you can't really explain and obviously it's worth it <laughs> um so I know I said I wouldn't like put my kids in front of um the camera anymore and I'm not gonna do monthly updates but she is here and I figured you can get to meet her at least once. So here she is. <laughs> she's like, what are you doing, mom? Yeah. And she's getting so big already. Like on Wednesday, she was last weighed on Wednesday and she was 11 pounds and seven ounces, right? 
so she's getting so big she never lost any weight um which is very rare <laughs> um she's just a pig i guess <laughs> um she's already sleeping through the night she's been sleeping through the night for the longest time it's just but she stays awake a lot during the day that's another thing she she is awake a lot during the day but she's generally quite a content baby so it's very easy isn't it yeah yeah can you say hi can you say hi as you can see very little hair and if you remember what nathaniel was like he had loads of hair but she has more in the back and that's shame yeah she has a bit more in the back <laughs> But yeah, so that's Gabby and that's my labor and delivery story. So thank you for watching guys.